Carmen? Yes, Mr. Wright. Uh, a favor, could you call me tomorrow? This is regarding something else, not this meeting, but I, I need to speak okay. with you tomorrow when you get an opportunity. Absolutely. I will call you in the morning. Thank you. Hey, Tim. Oh, that's me again. Summer complaining and zoning to or. Uh, roll call, please. Present. Present. Lorena Sendejas. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mrs. Sendejas, uh, let us know that she's not going to be able to uh, attend the meeting tonight. Present. Delario Rangel. Present. Bruno Magaña. Present. You have four, Mr. Chair. Well, well uh, due to the situation, we're going to dismiss with the pitch, Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, uh, that brings us to item number three, approval of minutes for regular meeting April 20, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the previous meeting, please. I second the second motion. motion. It has been moved by Commissioner Rice. It's second by Commissioner Rangel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Motion carried. This brings us to call to the public. Hearing none or seeing none. Okay, we'll move forward to item number one, rezoning case number ELN 19-00017. Report, please. Mr. Chairman and members of the Summers and Planning and Zoning Commission, the first two items on the agenda tonight are uh, city-sponsored items, meaning the city is initiating these. Uh, however, tonight we also have an item on the agenda that is initiated by a, a developer. And we have the developer here present via Zoom as well as his engineer. So okay. his staff's uh, recommendation request, if we could share that item first. Sure, no problem. Uh, we'll move to number three. Okay. Give me one second here and we are ready. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the Summers and Planning and Zoning Commission, the item first before you is preliminary flat case number PLN 20. Dash 0007, which is the preliminary plat request for the max subdivision. This is a request by a local developer, uh, Alex Gallardo, on behalf of a 
Celerino Gallardo LLC to develop the for the approval of the preliminary plan of the MAC subdivision, which is a single family residential subdivision of 3.65 acres. This is, um, this is it right here. It's located on the southwest corner of Cesar Chavez Avenue and Madison Street. The applicant is proposing to subdivide this parcel into 16 residential lots uh, ranging in size from 6,000 to 8,165 8, square feet. So the, the, how the size of the lots will be about the same as the adjacent uh, subdivision. And they are in conformance with that, the zoning district, which is of that parcel. There, the parcel is already zoned R16. The general plan land use designation for this parcel is low density residential. So there's no further uh, zoning clearances required other than the subdivision process itself, which includes preliminary and final flats. This is the layout proposed by the applicant. It's just a um, very simple layout, just one street in and out in uh, through Cedar Chavez and out through Madison and vice versa, as well as a retention basin on uh, the north east corner of the parcel. Any questions so far? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. How is the now going to affect future development to the other parcels? So that it's uh, it's going to be like that. Let me pull this back there. Let me, uh, let me uh, pull the other exhibit up here, Mr. Chairman. Are you asking uh, how the streets are going to line up? Yeah. Or? To, the, to, the other, to the other properties, to the where? Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, Mr. Chairman, the, this development, uh, this is our city limit right here, Madison Street. Mm -hmm. So the, the city of this, to the north is Yuma County. Uh, we don't ex anticipate any development going into the north and in the near future. However, to the south and to the west of this parcel, it is currently zoned for more single family residential. So the only thing that we see that's gonna be coming into this part of town in the near future are more single family homes. But in the meantime, it's gonna remain agriculture. Um, and whenever this development does come in, uh, it'll be, It'll be very similar to what's already around there and as well as what is being proposed by the developer here. The only thing though that uh, to kind of answer your question a little bit more is that the streets, this is pretty much it. There's no uh, future connections to any other street uh, that are being proposed at this point. So uh, the other developments will have their own in entrances and exits, and uh, this subdivision will have just one on each of the streets that it is adjacent to. Um, but that's pretty much it, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, it's you know what is being proposed to develop is what is going to develop in this area because that is what the zone. Unless if someone comes in and changes the zone, but that's that's not uh, foreseen at this moment. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, on uh, uh, Madison Street or County 15th, are they going to pave the whole street to match the uh, part to the east, or is it going to be a half street like they did originally? Mr. Rice, uh, I'm going to zoom in to this exhibit here. Um, so, um, 
Mr. Rice, the uh, the developer will be required to improve looks like 55 feet of right of way from the edge of the subdivision or I'm sorry from the edge of the uh, sidewalk to the uh, I believe that is the center line of County 15. So okay, it will be that, required. That answers my question. Thank you. Yes, so it would be half of the street and the sidewalk, Mr. Rice. All right, I understand. I just couldn't read it before, so thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions? I just have a general comment. Possibly. Um, okay. Looking at it, in my mind, it looks good. Like usually when, when I think about cul-de-sacs, um, I think there's a misconception that that they might be more safe because it slows down traffic, but in reality, it funnels uh, traffic to specific streets, so it makes it more unsafe for pedestrians. But this, because it has two um, exit streets, I, I don't think there's going to be uh, an increase of traffic, so that's why I have no objections. Thank you for your comment, Commissioner Magaña. Okay, um, well, staff's recommendation for this preliminary plot request is approval with conditions. And uh, if there are no further questions, I will proceed to the conditions of approval. Okay. There are 14 conditions of approval, and those are found in Exhibit A of your agenda packet. And the, the conditions of approval for preliminary plat case PLN 20-007 max subdivisions are as follows. Number one, all future development shall comply with all applicable codes at the municipal, state, and federal level, which is a standard condition for the city of Summerton. Number two, the owner shall be responsible for verifying utility availability and negotiating any access issues with adjacent properties, resolving any underlying matters not revealed during the due diligence period and subsequent uh, rezoning process. Uh, there is a little typo there. Uh, they shouldn't say rezoning process, it should say subdivision process. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change that. Number three, the developer shall comply with subdivision regulations, development standards, and use regulations of the Summerton Subdivision Ordinance and Summerton Zoning Ordinance, which means that uh, the subdivision will be developed, designed and developed in accordance to our adopted subdivision and zoning ordinance. Number four, developer shall upgrade and improve multi-use pathway along Cesar Chavez Avenue adjacent to the new subdivision. Pathway must be improved to adopted City of Somerton pathway standards. We have, uh, I, you may recall from a, a year or so ago that we updated our zoning ordinance to say that when a subdivision or a development comes in that is a, adjacent to a planned pathway, the developer would be responsible to improve the said pathway. In this case, there is a pathway along Cesar Chavez Avenue so they will improve that portion that corresponds to this development, condition number four. Condition number five, developer shall build new multi-use pathway along Madison Street adjacent to new subdivision. Pathway must be improved to adopted city of Summerton pathway standards. So there's two pathways in this case because it's a corner parcel and it just happens to be along two uh, uh, major roads. So there is a pathway on both Madison and on Cesar Chavez and they will both be improved. Uh, number Condition number six, developer shall extend 12 inch water main along Madison Street. Um, and that is to serve this development. Number seven, developer shall extend sewer main along Cesar Chavez 
avenue to the point of connection. Number eight, developer shall obtain a water report from the Arizona Department of Resources, with the Department of Water Resources. Number nine, developer shall obtain any necessary required permits from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Number 10, developer shall submit landscaping plans for pathways and retention basin as part of the improvement plans and final plat package. Number 11, fire hydrant access to any point in subdivision no further than 500 feet shall be provided. Uh, conditions number 10 and number 11, uh, we are requiring, um, these are basic, will be reviewed at the final plat stage, which is after this. Uh, 12, developers shall convert the water rights or parcel from Yuma County water users irrigation to city of Summerton municipally served water usage. 13, developers shall connect retention basin to existing storm drain system on Cesar Chavez Avenue. Uh, that is for when that retention basin, if in the event that it were to ever fill up to more, I don't know what capacity percentage, but if it gets pretty full, the excess water can discharge into the storm drain and go to the Perriconi Park retention basin just south of the project. Number 14, developers shall submit to the city of Somerton for review a complete final flat package and improvement plans within one calendar year of the approval of preliminary plat by the Somerton City Council. So if it is your recommendation that this uh, be approved and if it proceeds to city council and if it is approved, then the developer will have at that point one year to submit the final flat package from the date of council approval. That doesn't mean they have to record in one year. That just means that they, we're giving them a year to, to proceed to the next step. Those are all the conditions the city is requesting from this project as part of the conditions of approval. Are there any questions on the conditions from the Planning and Zoning Commission? Present with us tonight are his, is the developer and his engineer. Any questions for them? Yes, I have a question. Would like to. Mr. Rice, yes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> is it the general plan of the uh, applicant to uh, develop that the, the rest of that parcel? Uh, into homes? Mr. Rice, um, we uh, have, um, it is the intent of the applicant to develop homes, single family homes. Uh, they'll look, well, actually, um, I would like to invite the, the applicant if they'd like to say something about their development right now, I think would be a good time if it's okay with the chairman and commission. Yeah, that's right. Um, Alex Gade, would you like to um, uh, say a few words about your project? Yes, if I may, uh, this is Vianney Vega with Vega Bay Engineering, the project engineer. Uh, to answer your question, Mr. Rice, uh, that project uh, is gonna be developed uh, as presented. Uh, the rest of the property is not owned by my client, so this is this is a single uh, this is a one one uh, uh, project that is going to develop the the proposed 16 lots, and and that will complete the that will complete this uh, project, and there will be a single single family residence. Uh, also, to uh, comment on your other question as far as the road uh, development on the north side, that is going to match what's existing on the east side. On uh, um, it will be the exact uh, same width of road and sidewalk that we have on the east side. So that will extend all the way to the west of the property. And um, thank you, uh, staff, for presenting this project. And um, I'll be more than glad to answer any answer any additional questions that uh, that uh, the commissioners might have. Thank you, getting. Mr. Rice, does that answer your question? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the commission? 
if I may, um, I have a question for staff. Um, uh, the condition number twelve, of, as far as connecting to the to the storm drain, is that is that uh, storm drain is existing? It runs along uh, along. Uh, actually, no, it's not twelve. Sorry, it's uh, number thirteen. Uh, that runs along Cesar Chavez Avenue. Yes. It, it runs along Cesar Chavez Avenue and uh, discharges to the Perry Park Retention Basin. Okay. And it's already uh, in existing existence. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the information. You're welcome. I am going to uh, now go to the staff report. Does the commission have any questions on the staff report? No, 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 not on my part. If there are no further questions, staff does have a recommendation for the Planning and Zoning Commission tonight. The recommendation is that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval of preliminary flat case PLN 20 dash zero 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 seven with the conditions included in exhibit A. And there's a suggested motion on there as well. I'd like to move to recommend the approval of the preliminary Is being moved, is there a second? Second. Very well, then moved by Commissioner Rangel, second by Commissioner Rice. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very well, most encouraged. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Thank you, Mr. Guillermo. Uh, um, BNA, you, you, um, you're more than welcome to stay and, and listen to the rest of the meeting, but uh, if you're good, we, we're all wrapped up here with your case. I'll send you the Perfect. approval letter in an email and to you and, and to Alex. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Number one, number two. Uh, what's come on? We should do one. All right, that brings us to item number one, resuming case number PLN 19-00017. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. This item rezoning case PLN 19-00017 is actually um, that this one and the next one, PLN 19-00018, they go together. They're concurrent. It's a concur It's a rezoning and a concurrent general plan amendment. So in order for the rezoning to happen, first the general plan amendment needs to happen. So um, the exhibits are almost identical in the two cases. The, the staff report is very similar as well. So um, if I may, I'd like to present the information for both these together. Sure. However, when it comes time to make a recommendation, you will have to do the, each individual one. Okay. Okay. okay, so I'll start with uh, the rezoning one. Oh, actually, let me share my screen first.
Members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Mr. Chairman, this is rezoning case PLN 19-00017, uh, a request by the City of Somerton for a rezoning of a portion of 10 acres more or less of APN 195-33028, a 19.87 acre parcel from R3 multifamily residential to C2 general commercial and the rezoning of APN 33-027, a 35.79 acre parcel more or less from R16 single family residential and R2 multifamily residential to open space. The purpose of this rezoning request is to allow the development of a future commercial center along Main Street and of a future regional park adjacent to the future Somerton High School. So as shown on the exhibit here, these are two parcels located directly north of Main Street. They're both city owned parcels. The city acquired these parcels in 2017 and they were all, they already had the zoning that's in place right now when these parcels were acquired. So this is what the current zoning is um, give me one second here. Oops, I, let me get it back up. I apologize. That's better. Okay, so it's this parcel right here and it's sideways for, for th this uh, exhibit. I wonder if I could rotate that. You? Oh, side to, no, that's not it. Uh, it's not. I think I not going to cut off though. I thought about doing that, but yeah, it's slightly better. Okay. So thank you. So it's these two parcels north, north of main street, uh, at the general cross street, Tessar Chavez and main street. This is the, they're right next to Perry County park. And the, the first one, the bottom one is currently zoned R3 and C2. Uh, and the top one is zoned R16 and R2. The rezoning request is to change the zoning of the bottom parcel, which is APN 1953328 to all C2. So we are changing just the portion that is are currently R3 to match the C2. So that is that whole 20 acre site will be C2 general commercial. And the, the upper parcel, the 35 acre parcel, it's currently zoned for single family residential R16 and multifamily R2 it's all going to actually go to open space. The reason that these rezonings are being proposed is because the city is trying to develop or rather in, attract the development of a commercial center in the, in the lower parcel, the one that is zoned for C2. This is the, the conceptual layout for what the city has in mind. Um, it's basically creating a small commercial, well, actually not small, but a 20 acre commercial subdivision, uh, that would be anchored by retail stores, offices, business, possibly a hotel, possibly the, um, sunset clinic restaurants. Uh, and, um, but for right now, in order to do the subdivision first, the, the rezoning has to happen to get that in place. And then this is a, another conceptual layout too for um, the shopping center, which is one of the priority projects for this for the for the whole development. And this is on a 4.2 acre site, so this could potentially occupy this parcel in the future subdivision. We also have a, a little elevation there.
the um as okay As far as the general plan amendment, um, let me see if I can hold this up. One second. more seconds here. I'm trying to find the um, <clears throat> general plan uh, land use map that I had as part of my uh, exhibits for, for the report, but I uh, can't seem to find them. Basically what it would, would uh, show, shows that the uh, general, so we have zoning and we have land use. Uh, the general plan has the It's in, it's in your staff or it's in your agenda packet for sure. It's just not on, it won't be available for those. Uh, Mr. Magana and Mr. Rice, would you happen to have your uh, hard copy of the agenda packet with you? Yes. No, I do you have it, Mr. Rice? No, I do not. I have no. a okay, well, let me... <clears throat> I was trying to see if I could find it in my uh, email account here. Sure, I could. Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay.
Okay, I found it. Um, I do apologize for that. It's, I thought I had it in there, but I guess it wasn't in the in the folder. But I'm going to show you what I what I'm talking about. So in order for us to proceed with this rezoning, the land use from the general plan must also be amended. Um, and that is because we have a matrix in the general plan that tells you whenever you rezone an area larger than, I believe it's 14 acres commercial, you have to change the, if, if the general, general plan says it's not commercial, you can't proceed with the rezoning until you change it in the general plan first that you are, um, uh, that you, if that area is set for commercial, then you can proceed with the rezoning. Um, it may, it's, I think it's, it may, maybe less, um, but then, and then the upper parcel two, the general plan land use designation for that is residential. And what the general plan says, that is when you lose a certain area or possible units from residential, you have to um, do a general plan amendment if you want to rezone. In this case, if we want to rezone to um, open space, that 35 acre parcel, we need to change the general plan land use designation from residential to um, recreation and open space. So again, talking about the same parcels, And this is this is what the general plan calls for. So the bottom parcel, half of it is high density residential, which matches the zoning that it has. So that's all going to turn to commercial. It's all going to go red, so that we can proceed with the rezoning. And the top parcel isn't zoned. Isn't uh, the general plan calls for uh, residential, low density and high density. So that's going to go away as proposed. That's what we're proposing. And we want to do. We want. We are, we're going to need parks and recreation, or sorry, recreation and open space land use in order to rezone this top parcel to open space. Does, is that clear to everyone? What, we need to do this so that we can rezone. Any questions from the other two commissioners over this? No. I, I just have another okay. general comment if possible. Go ahead, Commissioner Magana. Just like the way I think about it when thinking about Main Street, um, uh, I, I think it's probably our most important physical asset. You know, the Main Streets are where communities express themselves, where they want to be, uh, where they share their lives with other people, you know. Um, and I think, like, just thinking about um, the little I know, um, uh, important and successful Main Streets in the U.S. are, are not, usually they're not expressed through shopping centers. Um, they're, they're rather expressed through mixed-use development. So providing commercial, for example, uh, thinking of Mill Avenue and Tempe, they provide um, some areas, they provide residential, but also commercial adjacent to each other. So that's why I'm kind of weary about just developing a shopping center or just, just strictly commercial, you know, and that, that's kind of my thoughts on this. If I may, Commissioner Magana, I uh, I appreciate that comment because uh, I I want you to know that we are on the same page. I I completely agree with you that um, main streets need to be walkable. They need to be mixed use areas. They need to be a place that you just don't drive by. It needs to be somewhere that you want to stick around, that you want to uh, spend the day in. And yeah, uh, shopping centers, um, especially the older shopping centers, the ones from the 90s and the 2000s, they, they kind of got away from that pattern. And, and that's why you, you may, maybe are worried that's what's gonna come here. But um, the good thing is that the city of Summerton, we have a couple of area plans. We have uh, the general plan, the downtown redevelopment plan, and we're working on another plan you may have you may have mentioned before the infill incentive overlay plan mm -hmm. all three of those plans 
do reflect that vision what you just what you just described of, of main street being uh walkable high density mixed use uh, more traditional main street environment uh however it, it does and there we do have an established boundary for for what that is i mean main street is miles and miles is yeah. in, in span so we with the city we do have an area of the of main street that we do have identified that's exactly the kind of development that we want to see what you just described and and the boundaries of that and it's reflected in all those three plans that i told you uh that runs from cesar chavez avenue all the way to columbia avenue so it's about a mile and a half um of what is the downtown core of the city of Summerton. This project is on the outside. It's west of Cesar Chavez. So this is more, uh, a more of a uh, ex-urban development. It's, it's a greenfield project. Um, there's really nothing out there. It's, it's all agriculture. And um, this would be outside of the boundaries of that walkable, compact urban core that we have identified and that we do want to create. Uh, if this project was inside of there, I would perhaps say that, yeah, perhaps we want to come up with a, a design that, that reflects that uh, building pattern of, like you said, Mill Avenue, uh, something more the... in line with the downtown. All right, no, it's a great example. It's one of my, it, it was uh, one of the APAs best streets in America it's a great example but um this one this project in particular though is, is outside of, of our downtown core so it, it is staff's view opinion that it is actually quite perfect for the area something like this and when the plan review stage does arrive we will ensure that this project is a quality project it's not going to be just an ugly building we're going to Especially if we're the ones selling the land, you know, we, we know what we want. So we have some leverage there too. And um, we'll make sure it's a good project okay. once we arrive at that um, stage. Yeah, that's just sort of what I'm thinking about. Um, uh, just the importance of, of getting community feedback, I think is very important. Um, and I, I think is uh, perhaps slacking at this stage, um, only giving two days for people to comment, which I know is um, very difficult to get community input um, in, in terms of general planning, in terms of uh, rezoning. Um, but um, two days, I think, is too little to. Okay, Commissioner, are you referring to the um the, the time frame that you received your packets because we were actually discussing that no 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 and, um, um, for the not next not myself not myself but the community um uh given people so looking at there's a meeting to to discuss this rezoning for uh, community members uh, may 31st mm -hmm. So for right. maybe, maybe I'm wrong, um, I think two days, people had an opportunity um, to re review the rezoning. Maybe that maybe that's just like the, the, the turnaround, um, but I, I feel like two days given uh, the COVID-19 crisis and it, it's very short uh, to get public. Oh, I, I, I don't mm -hmm. But I, I agree. Oh, I, Mr. Mr. Yeah, you have a question? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, uh, just to further clarify the, uh, the uh, timing that we have, uh, we follow the um, Arizona Revised Statute when it pertains to cities and, and regulations. Uh, we have, we are mandated to uh, provide due notice of the uh, date, time, and the type of um, process that we are going to be discussing, like, Tonight, um, we also publish, we are required to publish in the newspaper of local publication. Mm -hmm. And uh, we invite the, uh, the residents in general. Um, furthermore, we also held a neighborhood meeting uh, 
back in, um, I believe it was the end of May. Um, unfortunately, we, we didn't have any, anybody to attend that meeting, but um, basically we are giving the opportunity to the residents and everyone to comment and, and you know, make, make their, their, their voice uh, to, the to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And also, because the Planning and Zoning Commission is, is a recommendation to council, we are going to be presenting this to council. Before the council meeting, we are also required to uh, publish a public hearing notice with this information invited to, to the residents. So um, I believe we give ample opportunity to the residents to voice their opinion or ask questions to staff, uh, whether it's going to be during the uh, office hours or during the actual public hearing. Um, but, you know, if, if it's a, a concern that, uh, that the time period is, is too short, I believe we are complying with the um, the um, CRS regulation. If I may also, Carmen, add just just a one more point I'd like to clarify. Commissioner Magana is um, so the neighborhood meeting was was held on May 31st. Mm -hmm. I was out there for about half an hour and, and nobody showed up. Um, we. I know it, it, it's not included in the staff report. I typically don't include this, but the state Arizona revised statutes does, does mandate that we have to give a 10 day notice to those people who uh, receive an invitation to the neighborhood meeting. So I actually sent an invitation to the neighborhood meeting on um, the 20th of May. Okay. So 11 days that out. That, that, that sounds, I wasn't aware of and yeah, it's not on the staff report. I, I typically don't include that bit of information, but yeah, that, that I did mail that out at least 10 days out, inviting people to this to the neighborhood meeting. No one showed up though, and I also did make it available on Zoom. I was live streaming it on Zoom simultaneously. Um, and then what it, what is on the staff report is the the date of the legal ad publication, which is which was on May 30th. That legal ad is for this meeting not the neighborhood meeting. That is for the first public hearing and that has to be at least 15 days prior. So exactly 15 days prior is when it was sent out. And we also sent the letters out uh, a, a day before that. So I think that's perhaps what what, what you were. Yeah, yeah, to, I, to thought, I thought um, the 10 day thing was, I wasn't aware, but yeah, that's, that's. And I'll make I'll start including that in the staff reports. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Well, <clears throat> are there any further questions on the cases, the rezoning and the subsequent general plan amendment? If there are none, I'd like to proceed to the conditions of approval. The conditions of approval are the same for both cases. Are you able to see my, um, the screen that I'm on right now, the exhibits? Yeah, I'll share the other screen and we share it. Oh, do I? Okay. So pick up the file. Yes. Okay, stop share. And then I do. So as mentioned, uh, the cases are almost identical. The, the conditions of approval are as follows. Number one, all future developments shall comply with all applicable codes at the municipal, state, and federal level, standard city of Summerton condition. Number two, the owner shall be responsible for verifying utility availability, negotiating any, any access issues with adjacent properties, and resolving any underlying matters not revealed during the due diligence period and the subsequent rezoning process. Another standard condition. Number three is, isn't standard, but it is unique to this. these two parcels, is uh, development on the subject parcel shall not be permitted if said proposed development is in any way conflictive and or restrictive to the establishment and, per, and or perpetual existence of the Summerton High School and proposed elementary schools in the vicinity. 
what is what that is saying is that if this rezoning is approved and if the subdivision does get developed and someone wants to come in and develop a use that is in any way in conflict with the high school perhaps you know there's a number of uses that could be uh, an impediment to the to the existence of the high school or the safety of the surrounding area those uses shall be uh prohibited even though they could be allowed um a permitted use or perhaps a conditional use uh this would be this condition would be a, a restriction that would be that would run with the parcel that's what condition number three is and there's also not just for the summerton high school but there's also a the two um schools to the south of main street the elementary school and the middle school that could be coming in the future too any questions on the conditions of approval they're the same for both rezoning and general plan amendments if there are none i'd like to um Staff does have a recommended motion. For um, for both, actually, for you, you do have to do, act on these separately, as mentioned earlier. Okay. So I'm going to pull up the first for the general plan amendment, which is. I know they're out of order on the agenda, but. Um, the general plan amendment should be acted on first. I'm going to share that to your screens. So staff's recommendation for PLN 19-00018 is approval I mean, recommend to recommend approval with conditions the conditions listed in exhibit a and the suggested motion is below mr chairman i move to recommend approval of the minor general plan amendment case number pln 19-00018 with the Conditions listed in Exhibit A. Very well. Is there a second? No second. It's been moved and second to approve. Uh, General Plan Amendment Case PLN 19-0018. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And now, um, if there are no further questions on the rezoning case, uh, staff also has a recommended motion on that. The PLN 19-0017, and I will share that with you now. Same one, I apologize. This one. Here we go. Okay. So staff recommendation for PLN rezoning case PLN 19 0017 is approval with to recommend approval with conditions conditions listed in exhibit a and the recommended motion is below there was there a motion mr chairman i move to recommend approval of the rezoning case number pln 19-00017 with the conditions listed in exhibit a Was there a second? What's second the motion? Okay, it's been moved and second to approve. Uh, we're doing case PLN 19 0017. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Chairman, members of the commission, our next regular meeting is, is scheduled for July 20th. And I do believe we, can, we may have an item on the agenda. By then, I'm very hopeful that we are not going to have all these restrictions and uh, we are going to be all back in, in one room with the uh, respondent um, restrictions. But it's going to make our lives a lot easier when we are presenting all these um, documents and papers and, and, and forms and whatnot. So hopefully we're going to be in a better uh, way to, to present to you in, 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 a, in a better manner. So uh, as part of the update of current events, we have the 2020 general plan. Um, as you may recall, the last time we met, uh, we had our consultant from that gave us a, an overall summary of the general plan. And then after this meeting, we presented it to City Council on um, uh, January 2nd, and City Council approved the updated 2020 general plan. Now we have to wait until the election on November 3rd. It's going to be on the ballot. Hopefully, the residents of Somerton will ratify this plan, and it will become our uh, general plan for the next 10 years. So we are in the last page of the, that update, and hopefully, like I said, is going to get ratified by the Another update is on the 2020 census operation. We continue working with the Census Bureau. We have a deadline to submit the uh, questionnaire has been extended to October 31st, 2020. So we invite the residents of Somerton, they, if they have not submitted the questionnaire yet, they can, they can, they still have time to do it. They can do it online, they can do it by phone or uh, recently, the Bureau of the Census just um, started working um, on in Somerton. Uh, they had to stop because of the, all the restrictions with this um, uh, pandemic that we have right now. So they're back working in the, um, the cities. And what they're doing is they're leaving a bag, a plastic bag. They're leaving it on, their, on the front doors of every um, the residents here in Somerton, and it has information about the census, and it also has a hard copy of the actual census questionnaire. And this is for those people that have not been able to submit either online, by phone, uh, they still have the opportunity to submit a hard copy of the uh, questionnaire. So we have, it's called a paid leave program, and it's already done here in Somerton. As, as we speak, they're, they're placing the, uh, the, those questionnaires uh, those information on their on the front door. So we are we continue working on that. Another update is the high school plans. Um, we just talked about that. Uh, uh, the high school uh, district, in conjunction with the city of Somerton, continue having meetings and talking about the design and who's going to do what. So it, it it's moving forward slowly but surely. So we continue doing that. There is an elementary school that are plans to build a new elementary school right across the street from the newly planned high school. Uh, we're just talking about the, the high school area, the, the open space, the new community park, and the commercial. So now on the south side of uh, Main Street, the uh, Somerton School District is planning to build a brand new elementary school and possibly in the near future, another middle school in that area. So uh, that all west end of town is going to be um, changed, completely changed on, um, in the next few years. Hopefully these, these plans with the elementary schools are coming along pretty well and uh, hopefully we're gonna be receiving construction plans for review pretty soon for the elementary school. With the high school, we're still working on uh, with the high school district. And last but not least, uh, um, just to let you know, the city hall is still close to the public. We don't uh, have any public access um, until further notice. We, we continue observing regulations placed um, by the state, by the CDC, and, and we are here um, trying to conduct business as 
normal as possible, trying to not to delay any project or, or, or any process that is, is ongoing here uh, within the city. So we continue working. That's all I have for you. Thank you everybody for your patience. And Second. Second. Okay, moving second to adjourn.